A little while ago, I released a video on how to make your own hiking staff. And in the opening of that video, I discussed it, a number of things you can use your hiking staff for. Well, one of my viewers had commented that they would like to see me demonstrate a few of those things I had talked about. So that's what we're going to do today. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before I start any of the demonstrations that I want to share with you, there's just a few things I want to go over. First off is the stick itself. Now, I would highly recommend that you go back and watch my video on the making of this staff that I have right here but for the purpose of this video I, there's just a couple things that I want to bring to your attention first off as I showed in the other video there's a groove that I cut in the end of the stick here and I just have a short piece of lanyard on it and uh, one of the things I've done it's just tied on with a clove hitch right here but because of that groove it stays on and it's not falling off and I don't have to put a hole through the stick to hold it there it works very well now you can see it's actually a double loop on the end of this lanyard and I did that for a reason because I found that uh, it's works better when I'm hiking because most of the time that I'm hiking I'm not actually using this very often at least while I'm walking through the woods but if I want to then it's it's an easy enough thing for me to use but the issue with using it for a handhold is that it's rarely ever at the right height so yes I can take it off and use it a little lower and so on and so forth but uh, the reason I put that double loop in it is just to keep it out of the way so it's not dangling catching on branches as I go through the woods now, the other thing I did with this staff is to put another groove, just like the first one, on the other end of the stick. And that will, will play into some of the demonstrations I'm going to show you in a moment. And of course, just to recap, excuse the pun, is my copper uh, end pipe with the concrete screw in the end of it. And that's what secures it on the bottom. So this staff at, uh, from the ground up, it just comes up about mid cheek on me. And again, the reason is that that extra length uh, affords me a couple of things, extra reach we'll talk about in a second, but I'm less likely, especially when I'm descending over rocks to have this poke me uh, under the chin or, or any other place where I don't wanna be poked, of course. Okay, so let's just go over a few basics of the stick and this will be more of a review than anything else. These were all talked about in that other video, but uh, we'll get into demonstrations in a moment. So why carry a stick at all? Well, everything has to do with balance and having three points of contact while you're walking through the woods. So what this does for me primarily, at least in the area that I spend my time with here out in the wilderness, it's pretty rugged. The paths here cross a number of rock oak crops and I'm constantly going up and down and up and down. And what I find is that this makes both ascending going up over the rocks as well as descending much safer and much easier. And what I mean by safer is I can lower the stick below the height that I want. I can even put my hand over the top and allow, put my weight on the stick as I descend so I'm less likely to fall. Going up any ascents, I find that I can slide my hand down the staff a fair amount of ways, put my uh, stick onto the ground, and then use that to help pull myself up over the rock or that height that I'm trying to reach up over. So that's the primary things that I use this stick for probably 99% of the time. But I have used, well, I do use it for other things as well. And let me just mention a few of them. So one of the things you can do with this stick primarily in the winter time is when I'm crossing the lakes here and they're frozen. Um, I'm aware of where the weak spot are, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I see all the weak spots. So if I am crossing the ice and for whatever reason I missed a weak spot and I go through the ice, this affords me a real safety in that will catch me as I drop into the water through the hole and I won't submerge under the ice. So it's got some real benefit that way. Uh, crossing fast moving streams. If the stream is fast enough, it can take you off your feet if you're not careful, especially if you don't have good purchase underneath. And a lot of streams, of course, have moss and slippery rocks. So what I have found is that if the stream was moving towards me in this direction, that I can lead into the current with my body and support myself on the staff as I cross the stream. And uh, therefore I'm less likely to lose my footing and go down into the water. Now at the same time, while I'm crossing that stream, if there are dark holes and I don't know how deep they are, if I'm gonna step into something deeper than I want to, then I can probe into the water with the stick 
to get an idea of how deep it is. Now, that same probing can be done here when I'm going through the bushes. I can move bushes aside. I can probe into what look like soft areas to see if they're going to be deep or something I'm going to trip over. Same thing again in the snow. How deep is the snow? Before I step into it, I can get an idea of how deep it is by using my staff. So those are some of the more common uses for this staff. Now, I suppose I did mention this could be used as a spear if you wanted to for self-defense or game uh, gathering in a survival situation. Not likely something I feel I need to do, but uh, you know, this still does provide if you have uh, coyotes or something that surprise you or wild dogs or anything else, then you, you could use this for self-defense, I guess, or at least prodding at, uh, prodding at them to keep them uh, away from you. Um, what else is uh, another thing that I mentioned? I guess I can probably demonstrate this one, and that is using the stick itself as a selfie stick for the camera. So right now I have my camera attached to a tree with the Joby Gorilla Pod, but if I wanted to uh, make a selfie stick and use that, I could certainly attach that Gorilla Pod to this one. I'll demonstrate that, I think, in a few minutes' time. Okay, I think I've hit most of the key ones that really don't need a demonstrations, but there are a few, I think, that are better demonstrated. So let's start. Without doubt, I think the simplest of all the tarp shelters that you can make is the plow point design. And for the most part, we rely upon trees in the woods to be the point where we tie the uh, tarp up to, to give us the clearance underneath it. Well, not all, the trees aren't always in the right places. There may be that you end up, because of where the trees are, facing your tarp into the wind as opposed to the back of the tarp. That's not ideal. Or maybe you're more in a field setting and you really don't have any trees at all that you can tie your tarp up to and that's where the hiking staff comes in to play. Now I'm using my 10 by 10 tarp for this demonstration. It's a little large but I think it works for it. So what was easy enough was, and I'm not going to demonstrate how to set up a plow point, there are plenty of videos on how that works, but all I did is I utilized that groove at the top of the stick, wrapped around. Let's see if I can come up under and show you how in this case just a very simple wrap around the stick uh, around the stick and cape under it here now I did have a tree fairly close at hand so I taut line hitched to this tree and I could have ran it down to another stake in the ground as well now what that allows me to do is I can move the stick back or forward to get either more or less height off of the ground uh, as I would want but uh, yeah, so just a very simple use of the stick, but one that can really be handy. Now, there is one more thing you could do with this, is if you have another staff, or if you have a stick that you can find from the woods, you can set that up as part of a bipod, and that's even more stable than the single pole is. But essentially, this works as a staff for holding up your plow point tarp. All right, for this next demonstration, I have reattached my lanyard on the end. This is where the uh, guy line for the tarp was attached a few minutes ago. And on the other end, I have attached a Y branch. Now, to attach the Y branch, all I did is, well, there's my Y branch. As you can see, there is a notch in the Y branch right here. And there's the groove that is in the end of the stick. So I started off with a Canadian jam knot and I just wrapped it around the uh, Y branch until I came to the end and gave it a simple frap right there to hold it on. It's actually on there very, very solidly, uh, but can be removed. So what's this useful for? Well, in the original video, actually, no, it was a different video altogether. It was a video I made on collecting pine pollen. And I, I had to attach a Y branch to the staff I had that day to reach up to the trees to get a hold of the pine pollen cones so that I could collect a few. So that's one of the things I wanted to show how you can use this staff for. So pine pollen season is long past this summer, but there is a tree right here and it's just a simple, what is this? Witch hazel, a little bit of a witch hazel tree right here. And I want to show if this was a fruit tree or a pine tree, I was trying to get some pine columns on or something up in the branches here that I wanted to collect, but was obviously outside of my reach. And the, trick, uh, the tree may have been too thick to bend the whole thing over. Then an extension like this really comes in handy. 
reach up, grab on, I can pull the branch down. Now, with the lanyard at the top of the staff, then I can actually place my foot on that. I have my hands free, and for as long as I need to, I can work picking fruit, do whatever I want to off of the end of the branch. And when I'm finished, release it, and then remove the Y branch and save it for something else. Okay, that's one, two demonstrations. Let me get together and do another one. All right, this next demonstration really is just an extension of the last one where I had the Y branch attend, attached to the end of my stick to pull down a branch so I could access it. But in this case, I actually want to take the branch off. It is a low hanging dead branch on a pine tree that I can use for firewood, a little bit too high to reach any other way. So by attaching my silky gomboy to the end of my staff, I can now reach up and saw it down. Now I'll show you how I managed to attach my gomboy. So really it's, I use the same piece of cord, the same type of a setup, but whereas the last time I started with a jam knot at the bottom where the ring is on the stick. This time I started with a jam knot at the top, got it as tight as I could, and then coiled around the handle. And what happened is the handle moved away from the stick naturally with the, the way it widened towards the bottom. And that gave me enough tension that I could put, draw it in as close to the staff as possible, and then just finished it off with a simple frap. Now, honestly, I could have made a much more uh, sturdy job if I had taken a longer cord and wrap multiple wraps all the way around, maybe wrapped fraps around again or done a whipping, something that would be even more sturdy than this. But this was just intended to be something very temporary, something I could reach up and take maybe one or two branches off. I'm not looking to take huge branches off or do a whole lot of work. Just a couple of sticks that I can reach up and get for firewood. Or maybe they're uh, Widowmakers above where I've set my tent and it's just the ideal spot except for that one stick then this will work for that So I will back up and show you. Let's see if I can reach it from here Showing on the camera. I think I need to tilt the camera up a tiny bit so that you can see what I'm doing And maybe bring it in a tiny bit as well so there's a couple of small branches here that I can work with. Now, uh, be, again, uh, because this is not so sturdily attached as it could be, you don't want to use a lot of pressure. Really do let the saw blade do the work and not a lot of pressure against it, but just start slowly. Oh yeah, by the way, you'll get sawdust in your face if you're not too careful. That came off if he's enough. Another one just above it. Gotta love the gone boy, right? And there we go, two branches down with a couple of seconds work above the height that I could have reached them any other way. All right, I have at least one more thing I wanna show you. All right, so this next demonstration may not have a lot of practical applications, maybe it does, but it is a lot of fun. And I've been trying it out for a little while. I'm far from an expert on it, so you'll have to look somewhere else if you really want to find out the best way to do that. And that is, I've created a staff sling, also known, if I correct, pronounce this correctly, as a fastibulus. It's kind of an ancient one-man trebuchet, a sling that will use the leverage of the stick and the little sling on the end to cast a projectile, in this case just a rock off of the lakeshore, uh, quite a long distance. Now, like I said, I'm not very good at it yet, and it does take a bit of practice to do that. A lot of the practice is getting this quite right, or as close as right to possible. So let me show you what I've created, and then I'll stand back and throw at least one rock and see if I can get it to go any distance at all. So once again, just a small piece of cotton it was a rectangle of cotton, probably eight, nine inches long. I just gathered the ends like you would a little hammock, used uh, clove hitches on each end to hold it, and that created this little pocket type of a thing here. And on this end, I put a little loop, a uh, bowline, and it's extended for me about three and a half inches off of the end of the little uh, sling right here. And then I tied another clove hitch on the end of the staff where that groove is. Now, here's the concept, is that you would put this uh, loop over the end of your staff like that. You would have the pouch hanging like that. When you swing the stick forward and over, 
the loop will slide off and cast the stone forward. Now, the ones I've seen in, in other videos and in uh, pictures of ancient ones is they actually have a notch cut into the end of their staff right here. So when it's like this, it would rest a little bit more securely and not slide down. But fundamentally, the principle is the same that will cast the projectile using the leverage of the stick. Okay, let's see if I can make this work and actually capture it on uh, video. All right, so I'll step back here. I may have to readjust the camera. Yeah, I think I'll just adjust the camera upwards a little bit so you can get a better view of what it is I'm doing. All right, yeah, I think that'll work a bit better. So the idea is you have your staff, you hold it out, put the loop up over the end into the notch if you have it built in. There, that's better. Put the rock in like this. Extend your reach out to the end of the staff and, and I hit a tree about 40 feet away. Not bad, wasn't trying to actually, uh, to be honest. But with practice, you can do exactly that. You can use this little sling to reach out and strike things with. Now, uh, in ancient times, it was more of a, let me bring the camera down a little bit again. It was actually intended as a personal weapon that you could uh, make very easily, but it could also be used for hunting. I'm sure small games, rabbits and birds could be dispatched with a little bit of practice, but this will cast a long ways. I've been uh, playing with it at the edge of the lake shore here. The only thing you've got to make sure is, and I don't have a lot of it here, is clearance for the stick up above. Here, I'm in an open space is great. Believe it or not, down at the edge of the lake, there's a canopy hanging out over the lake, so I couldn't get the swing I wanted to. But I was able to send projectiles, I don't know, 70, 80 feet. And I think with a little bit of practice, uh, you can do a lot better than that. And this also is very makeshift, just to prove a point more than anything else. So yeah, uh, yes, a ballista or a staff sling. I've got one more I want to show you. All right, last demonstration will be how I can use the staff as a selfie stick. So you can see I've wrapped my Gorilla Pod around the distal end of the stick. And in a second, I'll attach it in there. There's the little receptacle for the piece that slides in. And I'll just show you how it works for a selfie stick. All right, a little bit of truth on this. The camera is a bit heavy. The, uh, I'm using a Canon M50 for anybody who knows what that camera is. So it's a mirrorless camera, but it's a bit bigger than the older camera I used to film with. But uh, so what I mean by that is it's just a little heavy on the end of the stick. And if I don't hold it just right, it wants to slide around and underneath the stick. Uh, it would probably work better with a smaller camera, maybe a little action camera, but it is working just fine. As you can see, I can wander around do the walking scenes you often see people do with a selfie stick and their camera attached to it at some distance hold it up a little bit of a height if i wanted to show the immediate area around my feet it works well enough that i don't have to invest in and carry yet another selfie stick with a bit more bulk a bit more weight i have my staff i can use that well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was meant to be a little bit of fun going through a few of the things that, that you can do with your hiking staff. I want to thank the viewer. And if I can remember the name or find the name in the comment, I'll be sure to annotate it on the screen as well because they deserve credit for inspiring me to make this video. Yeah, it was a fun video to make, but I know for a fact it isn't exhaustive. There is a lot more things you can do with a hiking staff than I've already suggested. I went over a few things that are the most common things I use it for, like hiking, obviously, for going up and down over grades and, and rocky areas and the like. Um, I do use it for, with the Y branch for reaching up and grabbing branches, especially during pine pollen season. I have used it, not often, but I have used it for attaching a saw to. Um, I don't use it much for a ballista other than to have a little bit of fun with it. But I'd be interested in knowing, do you use your hiking staff for things other than the ones we've already discussed? in this video. If you have, please put that in the comments section below because I think it'd be fun to see what else people are doing. Maybe I can try those, come back with another video, or at least share it with the viewers on what uh, 
uh, what is possible to do with a hiking staff. All the more reason to make one for yourself. I will put a link to the video where I made this staff. I'll put that at the end of this video, but I would invite you to put any comments or any questions or suggestions you have in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.